In this recording, we're going to look at linking with ActionScript 3.0. So we're going to link from one scene to another, and we're also going to link from one frame to another. So we're going to start off by starting with a new Flash file. And we're just going to set up our workspace so that way we can actually start our linking. So the first thing I'm going to do is on f my first scene, I'm just going to draw a rectangle, which I'm going to use to actually as my button that will link to my other scene. So I'm going to draw my rectangle, press V for my selection tool, convert that to a symbol, and I'm going to call it button. Oops. I'm going to leave it as a movie clip. I could actually use movie clip or button here. It doesn't really make a difference. And OK. And that should pop up in my library right there. Now with action script, when I want to actually talk to something, for instance this button that we've just created, I need to give it an instance name. So to do that, I just move up to the top right hand corner of my properties inspector and I'm going to give it a name, which is the name that we'll type in in action script so Flash knows what it is we're talking to. So I'm going to call this button underscore MC. Now the underscore MC is a good little hint for Flash, so we'll see what the underscore MC does for us when we get into the actual action scripting. Okay, so I've got my button here on my stage, but I've got nowhere for it to go. So I'm going to insert a second scene. To do that, I'm just going to go up to Insert Scene. And you'll notice that the button's disappeared. That's because we're on a new scene. So Scene 1, Scene 2. I'm just going to draw something here in Scene 2, so I know that this is a different scene. And I'm going to go back to Scene 1. Now, what I also want to do is I want to be able to jump from one frame to another frame. So I'm going to do a link from scene 1 to scene 2, but I'm also going to do a link from one frame to another frame. So I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to go layer 20, and I'm going to insert a keyframe, and I'm also going to insert a keyframe on layer 1. Now layer 20 is the layer that I want to jump to. Now what I want to do here is I want to make sure that when I click on the button in frame 1 it will skip all of these frames here and end up on frame 20. So to do that I need to give frame 20 a label name. So I'm going to go up to my properties panel and I'm going to give it the name frame 20. And I'm going to do something to my 20th frame here just so that way it looks different so I'll know if it worked or not. Okay, so overall here I have two scenes, scene one, scene two. I have a movie clip which is going to act as my button that is on frame one. And in frame 20, I've created a frame name and I've made it look a little bit different. So now when I action script, I can actually jump from frame one to frame 20 and from scene one to scene two. So let's get started with our action scripting. I'm going to create a new layer and I want that layer on top. I'm going to call it the actions layer. And I'm going to bring up my action script panel. So to do that, I'm going to press F9, or I could simply go up to Window, Actions. Now I don't need any of this little code hinting, I just want my actions panel that I can type into. Okay, so very quickly before we start typing, I'm just going to hit Control Enter here to see what's going to happen. Now when I hit Control Enter, you'll see that it's actually flipping from frame 1 to frame 20 and then to scene 2 and then it just keeps looping over and over and over. I need to stop that from happening. So the first thing I'm going to type into my actions layer is I'm going to type a function in that's going to tell Flash quite simply to stop. So it's the word stop which should turn blue which indicates it's a keyword open close brackets and a semicolon which ends our statement. Now when I press control enter again Flash will just stay at frame 1 of scene 1 and nothing will happen which is exactly what we want. So now that we have that I can start doing my code to actually link from scene 1 to scene 2. So to do that I'm going to firstly say what is it that I want to talk to. Well I want to talk to the button I created which I called button underscore MC. Now the reason the underscore MC is a good thing to do is when I press the full stop button, the period, Flash will give me some code hinting. All of these options are everything I can do to a movie clip. 
And the reason Flash knows it's a movie clip is because I did underscore MC. So what I want to do is I'm going to do button underscore MC dot add event listener. So what I'm saying to Flash here is that Flash is going to listen for something to happen to my button. What is it that it's going to listen for? It's going to listen for a mouse event. Capital M, capital E. Very important that the spelling is exactly the same as what you see on the screen. If there's any little mistakes, it won't work. So Flash is going to listen for a mouse event. I'm going to press the period button again. And I now have another bunch of options on what type of event I am listening for. So for instance, I could do a mouse click. I could do a double click. I could have a mouse down, a mouse move, a mouse out. So I've got all these different options. Me, I simply just want a mouse event dot click. So here, it's going to listen for me to click my mouse on my movie clip symbol. I'm going to put a comma, a space, and I'm now going to give an identifiable name. So I'm going to call it on click. This name, quite simply, will allow us to direct the function to what it's listening for, which we'll see in a moment. I'm going to close the bracket, semicolon, which ends the statement. Acts like a full stop, so it ends the sentence. So I've set up an event listener. I am listening for a mouse to click on my button. And I've called this on click. So now I need to say, well, when it hears this, what's it going to do? So I'm going to write a function. So I'm going to say function on click. So I'm going to say function on click. So when you hear this happen, what are we going to do? Function on click, we're listening for an event, colon, it's a mouse event, close brackets, enter, open curly braces, enter, close curly braces, up, enter. So just very quickly, I'll do that again. It's open curly braces, enter, close curly braces, up, enter. So pretty much what we type inside our curly braces here this is actually what the f is going to happen when I click my mouse on the button. So I want Flash to go to and stop, capital A, capital S. Where do I want it to go? I want it to go to frame one, comma, space, open quotation marks, scene, space two, close quotation marks, close brackets, end statement. So when I click my mouse on the button here, I want Flash to go to and stop, Frame 1, Scene 2. Control Enter to test it. And when I click my button, you'll notice that Flash has gone to Scene 2. So you can notice that it's very simple, elegant code, very easy to do. So go to and stop, Frame 1, Scene 2, and it takes us there. And now all we need to do to actually go to a different frame instead of a different scene is change one little tiny bit of the code. So I'm going to go to a different frame. So I'm going to just quickly delete by having the brackets here. So in this case, I'm going to say go to and stop. And remember, we want to go to frame 20, which I called frame 20. So I'm going to open my quotation marks, frame 20, close quotation marks. I'm going to test that, control enter. Now when I click my button, it jumps to frame 20. So the reason you might use different scenes or different frames in a flash application is maybe a game, you might have a win scene, a end scene, an instruction page, if you're going to make an interactive kiosk, a website. So these are the times you would use links that will take you to different scenes and different frames.